limits. Usually the first exam is uh, scary for students because of the limits. Today in my calculus two classes I told them we're going back to the limits and they all like no, kind of nobody likes this topic of limits. But it gets easier after this. So the first exam usually is hard just because of the limits. Let me review some basic ideas which you will see on a test. All of these things will be on a test. I don't have to hide this fact, so I can reveal it to you right away. 5 minus x squared minus 8x squared over 7 minus 9x minus 4x squared. Limits at infinities should be your favorite ones because you can see the answer right away if you practice a couple of times. Find who is the leader of the polynomial at the numerator, the top of the fraction? 8x squared is. Who is the leader at the denominator? Minus 4x squared. The speeds are the same because the exponents are the same. So the answer will be the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is minus 8. I should do minus 8 included minus 8 and my over minus 4. The answer is minus, minus 8 over minus 4, which is 2. This is how fast you can do it. Of course, you could write down, it's a limit of this part over that part. Cancel out, get the ratio of the leading coefficients. The idea is like the top, the fra top fraction, the top of the fraction has a manager. The manager is this leader. The leader will decide where everything goes. Everything goes to minus 8x squared. The denominator has a manager. That's minus 4x squared. Only managers will decide the result. Minus 8 over minus 4. Make sense? That's case number 1. When the speeds are the same, the answer will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. Case number 2 is... Uh, 3 minus 2x squared, 2 minus 4x minus x squared plus x to the 5. At infinity, both of these fractions go to infinity. So your job is to figure out who is faster. If the speeds are the same, it will be like example 1. If not, it will be different. Find the leader of the top, minus 2x squared. Find the leader of the bottom. Which one? X to the fifth, amazing. Whoever is faster will decide the answer. Denominator goes to the infinity faster. That means denominator explodes to infinity faster. So this is the case called a number over infinity. A number over infinity, let's call it A over infinity. You're dividing by huge numbers. The answer will be smallest number you know, which is zero. Does that make sense? Kind of intuitively. You can also plug huge numbers in these questions and you will see the answer will be 0 0.00001. So you can have intuition goes to zero. Finally, case three. Case three, you can guess when the numerator goes to infinity faster. Four minus eight x squared. Two x plus six x goes to Let's do infinity, why not? Then the situation repeats. Find the leader of the top. Find the leader of the bottom. Compare who is faster. The numerator explodes to infinity faster. That is the case of infinity over a number. Infinity over a number is plus or minus some kind of infinity. Sign can be decided by infinity or a constant. In this case, this piece goes to infinity at the top times minus 8. It will be minus infinity. Make sense? Three cases. Speeds are the same. The answer is a number. Denominator explodes. You have division by huge numbers. That gives you zero. The numerator explodes faster. That is infinity. Three cases. Yeah. So, have you mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good comment. This negative changed the direction of infinity. Yeah. So, um, is something zero when the uh, uh, infinity is on the denominator? 
Yeah, if it's faster, right? Okay. So that's exactly a good, good job. You see now the pattern. X squared and X squared, the same speeds, the answer is a number. Denominator X to the 5 was faster than X squared. You're dividing a huge pizza by infinitely many slices. What's the size of each slice? Zero. The third case, numerator X plus to infinity, everything is infinity. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, there are lots of cases. I know what you're talking about. No, it will be different uh, cases. Let me see. So, for example, um, that's a good comment because you saw in your homework different cases. Even though, let me see. For example, 4 minus 8x cubed, like this is pretty interesting. x goes to infinity. Uh, looks like the same thing. This guy is winning and it's still multiplied by minus 8. But the answer will be, oh, and then let's do, let's do minus infinity. What happens when x approaches minus infinity? Now it's going to be plus infinity because minus cubed is minus, minus times minus is plus. So lots of cases uh, in your homework I don't like being tricky. Like a rich, not in the homework, in the exam. They gave me some tricky questions there, I just made them simple. Uh, I don't like putting tricky things on exams. That's my policy, I don't put anything unusual or tricky on the exams. Only standard stuff is there, uh, you should be fine. Because I think like, taking off points for minus sign, seriously, you know, especially for multiple choice part, you've missed minus sign, it's zero points, done. Mm, kind of upsetting. For the free response, I can give partial credit. But you have a good point. There are lots of cases there. Denominator might change the sign as well. Good point. And those are three types. Type number four, when you have to do some work, okay? You will have those questions as well. Number eight from the review. Uh, let's do number, oh, number five is good, yeah. Number five from the review is, the work will be done, either it's complicated work or not, Either you do some factoring and quadratic functions, so practice that, or not. In this case, step one, plug it in. Maybe you're overthinking. First of all, it's not infinity anymore, so that's already a different situation. Second of all, it's zero over zero case. Zero over zero case, you can do L'Hopital rule, which here will be very convenient, by the way. But if you don't remember L'Hopital's rule, which we just learned recently, you factor x minus three, and x plus 3, and factor 2 in the denominator, x minus 3. x minus 3 is the troublemaker. It get canceled out. Now it's just x plus 3 over 2. Plug your 3, and it gives you 6 over 2, which is 3. Some of you like using L'Hopital's rule, which is also fun. L'Hopital's rule tells you, well, actually, you can differentiate. Remember, I put LH in the circle. You can differentiate the top to x and the bottom to plug 3. It gives you uh, 2x and 2. x approaches 3. And it gives you the same answer. So either or. L'Hopital's rule tells you differentiate the top, differentiate the bottom separately. If you end up to have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity case. You have that on the test, so that is important. Practice quadratic functions. Practice number 11. Number 11, uh, practice by yourself. All those limits, basically, you have to practice them. Let me show you something from the graph. Average, I think you guys are not good with graphs. I can see it kind of freaks you out. So let's work on this. For example, that's why I put it in the quiz last time. Definitely check my quiz, one, two, and three. I will post all the keys for your convenience. You will have all the keys available. No late submissions of quizzes will be accepted. Couple people submitted the wrong paper or forgot the second page. It was couple first weeks. I was lenient. From now on, you have to check. Do not submit on time your quiz. I won't accept it anymore. You lose points. So make sure you, can, you know what you're doing about that. It's a document. You're responsible for your documents to be submitted on time and correctly, yes. Uh, Sorry. It's, it's going to be uh, multiple choice parts, so we don't care. 
it will be A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, right? And then it's going to be like what? 3 minus 3, 7, 0, D, and E. Choose the correct one. How did you choose it? Maybe you guessed? I don't mind. That's like a beauty of multiple choice. You can do whatever you want. Technically speaking, you can use the calculator again. Eh. Just the only thing we don't like is cheating. Everything else, I don't mind. You can do it. But for free response, we will tell you what to do. And there you have to do it. So you should learn L'Hopital rule, just in case. Yeah. Um, will there be a question where you have to use L'Hopital rule? So it might be there. That's why you should learn it. If we tell you use L'Hopital rule, you have to use it. It might be there. L'Hopital rule is a fun thing, though. It's not very troublemaking. Some people actually like it more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Questions about this? Oh, did you have questions? Yeah. About the quiz, um, for, the, for the people that look at that, I mean, I'll get off that quick. If, if my quiz is late, right? Yeah, try to, yeah, I remember you emailed me. Try yeah. to finish it before work, maybe, no? Like in class? As soon as I leave here after, so probably Email me. I can make like a whole extension maybe for the whole semester, a couple hours, okay. so you can come home. Yeah, it's a good point. Just email me about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely respect people who have jobs. I can, I definitely feel it's very hard to have both. So I will be lenient with that. Graphs. Let's work on graphs because I can see Technically speaking, I have a feeling this is where people will not do well on the test unless you practice graphs. So I wanted to make sure, did I explain this well enough or not? And today is a good part to explain it. Let's do it. Here is the graph. It was on the exam, it was on the quiz too. But it doesn't matter, some kind of graph. We ask it to find average rate of change from 1 to 11. Who is talking, people? Okay, good. Only questions are allowed. A, find average rate of change, I call it arc, on the interval 1, 11, whatever it is. And there's a whole backstory behind this. Antibiotic was created, population of beetles, in this case, in greenhouse, uh, tea weeks after the season's flower were planted. Do you know that our botanical garden has a butterfly's house and they show you how the butterflies are Evolve, very cool. So this is the graphs. How do you average rate of change? Average rate of change is change in output versus change over change in input. Just remember that. And actually, this is good enough to remember how to do A. That means find the second point output. So here it is. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And let me just make up this number to be 500, like so. So it's going to be 500 minus. Find the output for the first number. So it's always second minus first. This one, let's do it 100 minus 100. And then the length of the interval. In this case, 11 minus 1, so it's 10. Average rate of change will be 400 over 10, which is 40. On average, the number of beetles from day, from week one, I can say it in weeks, till week 11 was 40 beetles in, number of beetles in what? Just number of beetles? Oh, okay, not even in hundreds, just beetles. So this is average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. B, the instantaneous rate of change. Find instantaneous rate of change at, and now I give you some random number. For example, T equals 2. That is T. Okay. 2 is over here. What does this mean? Instantaneous rate of change is a derivative. If I give you a function like x squared plus 5, you know how to find the derivative of that. But did you understand how to find graphically? Graphically. Let's see. Two ways to figure this out. Like so. Uh, I would even say 
this is what I was uh, talking to my coordinator, how we should explain it better. Finding it is more important than comparing it or not. So she told me that uh, I should explain without even finding it. So I would say, and it's like a very unusual way that they want us to explain, but it's fine. Okay, let's go. For this case, here is the graph. You kind of zoom in at two, and I can literally do it like so. I'm zooming in. Instantaneous rate of change is this slope. It looks like this, and it's tiny one. It's very precise at two. The shape of this slope shows lots of information. If it's going up, then the function is increasing. How does it increase? A lot or not? So these things I want to explain right now carefully without even finding it. I think that's even more important. So compare. I would do like this. Let's compare. Compare. Yeah, let's do it. Comparison. Compare instantaneous rate of change at t equals 2. t equals 5 and t equals 11. Like so. Oh, this is very good. T equals 11, t, t equals 5, t equals 11. This is very good. What is the comparison? Zooming in, each will have these kind of sticks. Each stick is called a uh, tangent line. Tangent line shows you the behavior of the function. It's literally derivative. So it's derivative at t equals 5, t equals 2, 5, and 11. And those are slopes. And we learned that if slope is positive, the original function is increasing. If slope is negative, the original function is decreasing. In this case, I can see the original function is increasing. I can put the pencil on the graph and it's keep going up. Because it's keep going up, I know it's increasing. But the slope tells me how much it's increasing, by a lot or not by a lot. And this is what I'm trying to, not to give away what's going to be on the exam, but explain you right now. So pay attention. At this point, you see how high it sticks out to up in, imagine you're hiking this place. This will be hard to hike. This will be a bit easier to hike. And this will be very easy to hike because it's almost flat. And by flat, I mean horizontal. So fast increase is happening at two uh, slower increase and then barely any increase very slow increase this is what i was trying to explain do you understand why hiking each location will be will have different uh what's the word Challenge, yes, we'll have different level of challenge. Hiking at the first point at two is very hard, then it's easier and very easy. That means if they ask you a question, during the first weeks, the instantaneous rate of change of the population is increasing. Let's see, depends on how many first weeks. If they ask me during the first these weeks, the answer is yes, increasing. First, no, even like so, here, it's increasing. But then it slows down, and then it slows down. So let me make it clear and write it down. During the interval, interval, let's call it from 2 to 11, the instantaneous, the instantaneous rate of change is increasing or decreasing and that's the shocking part to explain that it is decreasing and this is when you're supposed to be you know there's a joke in tiktok when you just listen everything is so clear and then at some point you just start you like screw this i'm leaving this is the weird moment i just told you that when you put the pencil on the graph of the function it's going up it means the function is increasing and now I'm telling you that instantaneous rates is decreasing. And this is what's important to explain so you don't lose points in the test. 
the slopes are getting slower. Look at that. This one was very steep, not very steep, very not steep. So derivatives are decreasing. Make sense? That is very interesting difference. The original function is keep growing, but the speed of growth is decreasing. The growth was very fast in this neighborhood over here. It was very fast. For example, population of beetles just blow up exponentially. They're up. Now we have lots of beetles. And then it starts slowing down over here. Now population of beetles is still growing, but not as fast as before. This will be very important when we're going to go to surplus and uh, demand and supply functions and stuff. The toilet paper is still on demand, but not as much as during COVID-2020 when it was out of toilet paper. So it means it's still increasing, but slowing down. And we're going to have to learn what does it mean. And this is one of the examples, the first understanding of this idea. Derivatives are positive, but it's not steep anymore. So the instantaneous rate of change is decreasing, yes. How would the graph have to look for the multiple choice interview, uh, right, if it was increasing to decreasing? Uh, the so this is the graph. I'm or, how would the graph change if instead the answer oh, was that? Mm -hmm. increasing to decreasing? Very good question. Yeah, very smart. That's a very good question. Uh, I'm using this graph, and the question is, okay, so this is what they asked here, and let me show you the other one. It would be nice if you just to make it bigger. Okay. During the first week, the instantaneous rate of change, it says, is increasing, falls. Because as you can see, it was increasing first and then starts slowing down the increase. The question is, what will be the graph when it actually the answer is truth? That means something was growing slow, but keep growing, speed up, speed up, speed up, and keep speeding up. So that's an interesting idea. It was growing, but slowly, faster, faster, faster. Basically, uh, and then it's not slowing down, as you can see. I will be doing like so, go up. It's basically, hike is not getting easier. That's what I would say. If the hike is getting easier, the steepness is decreasing. If, if hike is not getting easier, the steepness is keep increasing, and that is the idea. That is it. very cool. Basically, a rocket is going up, and it's not slowing down. It's keep actually speeding up. Acceleration is increasing, and acceleration is derivative of velocity, so its derivative is increasing. Oh, does this make sense? This is a hard thing to explain, so I would like you not to lose points in a test for questions like this. This is the only exam where we ask these questions, so... The average, let me, um, again, let's see. F of x is increasing, but F prime is decreasing, and F prime is instantaneous rate of, oh no, not in this case. Uh, let me make it, let me, let me erase this picture, yeah, it's not too bad. So in that case, it was f original function is increasing, but instantaneous rate of change is decreasing, which means um, hiking, hiking is getting easy. That's kind of the idea. Your hike is not steep anymore. That is the idea here. Steepness explains the derivative really well. But the original function is increasing. So the another, fun the another question is, that was question one. Original function is increasing. Question two, derivative is decreasing. Question three, how about average rate of change? On average, is this function getting bigger or not? On average, it is. Average rate of change is increasing. That is the idea here. Average rate of change is increasing. Well, at least on this interval. We don't know what's happening after this. On average, we can see something is growing. And question number four is the weirdest one. Let's compare instantaneous rate of change and uh, 
average rate of change. So average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Which one is bigger or smaller? Let's go back to the graph and see. On average, we already found average rate of change. It was here, see? On average, how to find average rate of change? I took the second output and the first output, compared output minus output, input minus input. That means I took those two points and connected them like so. When you connect those two points, you find the average. This is my average. Average rate of change. Write this down. Connecting those two points you used is the average change. And as you can see, on average, the function is growing. So that's good. But when I want to compare it with instantaneous rate of change at 2, I will do the same thing. I will just see the slope at 2 and compare which line is steeper. Which line is steeper will show me which one wins, which one is faster. Arc wins or F prime wins in this case. Do you know what I mean? Arc is hiking and instantaneous rate of change at 2 is also hiking. Which hike is steeper in front of you? What do you think? This answers the question they ask here. Let me show you what I mean. The question C, the average rate of change of whatever we give you is less than instantaneous rate of change or greater than instantaneous rate of change. What is, it, what is happening here? This is what's happening. The average rate of change is the connection of two points, like so. That means average. What is your average grade in class? You take all the grades and see the average. The average is like what? 85%, you are in the B level on average. But right now at the exam one, what is your instantaneous change of the grade? That is right now. You take your moment of time, February, second month. Find the slope and see which one is steeper. Which one is steeper will be greater. Does that make sense? So in this particular example, F prime at two is steeper than average rate of change from 1 to 11. So I will answer arc. Arc was average rate of change is slower. So let me write down for you to know average rate of change where on the interval from 1 to 11 is less, less then the instantaneous rate of change. All this terminology probably is freaking you out, especially if you're tired. It's way too many verbs to use, especially if English is not your first language. Just remember, instantaneous rate of change is F prime. They mean derivative. Less than the derivative. At what point, though, point matters? At T equals to, at that point, hiking at the moment, two will be harder than the average hike in total. Does it make sense? So what about a different one? Question number five. So I didn't ever mention Q4, uh, Q3 means question number three and four and five. Question number five. What if I choose another point? For example, point nine. How about, so instantaneous rate of change at T equals two. We discussed that. The right, the derivative is faster there, steeper. How about arc and then derivative at 9? I don't know. Which one is steeper? Let's go and check. I'm finding point 9. It's over here. Let me choose another color. 9 goes here. Here is the steepness of the point 9. It's barely steep. In this case, average steepness, average steepness will be bigger than the steepness at point 9. Make sense? That's how you do it graphically. You could calculate it numerically. Uh, that's what I was surprised at. Actually, we want you to know it graphically more. Yes. Uh, will we be required to do it a certain way? Uh, I was reading on the exam, it says, 
You can do it this way, but we recommend you to do it graphically because it's faster. And that's why I contacted coordinator and asked, so which way we, we want them to do it. And she says both ways are good. Yeah, I also was uh, surprised about that. Like, how do we want to see that? Does it make sense? So steepness on average. Very interesting idea with driving. This is your speed on average. Your speed was 75 miles per hour. But at moment two, it was 90 because there was no police there. But at the moment nine, you saw your Google tell told you there's a police trap. So you slowed down and became 65. Does it make sense? 65 is less than average. 90 is bigger than average. But each of them are at the particular moment why the average covers the whole trip from here to Tucson. That is the idea. That's kind of a good example to explain with you, you driving. Okay, that was, uh, hopefully that helped you to understand. Finally, uh, so limits will be on the exam. These graphs will be on the exam. Finding every trait of change algebraically or not. Derivatives, we did derivatives using limits. Do you remember? I deleted it from the exam. I did not like it. Uh, so you can find derivatives any way you like on my exam. It says that. Use any method you want. Too time consuming to do limits. It's just too annoying. I also think that. So you can use any way you like. But I did notice you have problems with the graph of the tangent line. And that's when I decided, when I saw you struggling with the previous quiz, with the equation of a tangent line, of equation of the, this is when I was thinking if you are ready for the test or not, of the tangent line. This one, you, I gave you my video, and so on, but you should practice it, okay? It's pretty important. We will be asking you this on every single exam. I'm not making this up. Equation of attention will be exam one, two, three, final, and then to 11, it will be an exam one, and I think two. I don't remember if I've gone. So it makes sense to learn it once since we ask you it all the time anyways. It has lots of applications, that's why. Find the equation of a tangent line and we give you function, three x squared, minus 4x plus 6, and then we give you x equals 2. What to do? Very fast, very convenient, be confident. Step 1, you always start with deriva derivative. Use any method you like. 6x minus 4, agree? Step 2, finding slope. Slope is your derivative at the given point 2. So I'm going to plug 2 into my derivative, which is 12 minus 4. So it's 6 times 2 minus 4, which is 8. This is m. This is slope. Now something is missing. X, uh, x was given, and sometimes people call it x sub 0. That represents the initial point. Where is y sub 0? If this thing is not given, if this data information is not given, you have to find it, plug x sub 0 into the original function, original. So it's going to be y original at 2, which is 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6. And that will be your output, your need. What is that? 4 times 3, 12, minus 8 plus 6. 18 minus 8, 10, I think. Yeah? Yeah, good. Finally, the fourth step is up to you. There are two ways to see the formula. Most of you can see, like this formula, mx plus b. You just need to find b, but now you know x and y. I teach with this formula, and somehow STEM people will like this one, but no restrictions, you choose whatever you like m x minus x sub zero for the second formula everything is given you just need to plug in m we found is eight x sub zero was given two y sub zero we found it it's ten so technically speaking you can just plug it in but you guys like it with b so i will do it with b for you y is ten equals m which is eight x x is two your b is 10 minus 16. Make sure you don't mess up here. I move carefully everything on the side. 10 minus 16. That's minus 6. The answer is 
5. Write down the answer in the form of y equals mx plus b minus, uh, what is it, 2x minus 6, y is 2, 8. 8x minus 6. This is the answer. See, uh, I do it fast because I practiced a lot. If you practice a lot, you can also do it fast. I promise you. It's just practice. Uh, it's not like a... Yeah, I just did it so many times. I can do it fast. So your job is to practice number one, two, and three from the review, which look like so. Practice these. And you do have a practice exam, which is your quiz grade. So don't forget, it's due Monday. It's really good, actually. Uh, someone, someone mentioned to me there is a practice exam in WebAssign. I did not know that, so I kind of did not know. I checked and compared. Mine is better. So I made that one extra credit. And also, it's very long. Mine kind of is closer to the exam, so it would be nice if you actually do mine. And it is your grade, after all. Last thing let's do is this one, and it's going to be right now on your quiz anyways. So why not do it? I also have some Russian dolls on your quiz. See, you can doodle some Russian dolls. But I want to practice this one thing with you. And then we can do the quiz. Marginal analysis. Marginal analysis. That is basically taking derivatives. Do you understand that if we give... Do you understand that if we give you a cost function, if we give you a cost function, and it is uh, 8x squared plus 5x minus 3, and then we'll say that uh, we sell items, items sold, so in my quiz it's Russian dolls, sold, uh, what, $10 per item, right? So, oh, I don't have to do A. It's just um, a question. A is the question, find revenue. So now all those questions, why keep doing new? It's like a curse. No, that also doesn't look good. Revenue, yes, look at that, uh, bad habit now. Because it sounds like new, right? I don't know, in my mind it sounds like that. So. Now we can find revenue and profit, marginal cost, marginal revenue, marginal profit, and plugging point at each function. That's what you're going to do right now in my quiz. And it's not a secret. I can give it away. It's going to be on the test. Finding all of these things. If you can do it easily, you're good. So you basically practice, and then I really see people getting 100% if they practice enough. The only part you can freak out during the exam, and it will be too late. Not to freak out, you have to practice. Who knows what is the revenue function? R of x. 10x. Do you understand that? That's like real. If you mess up this part, everything will be wrong after this. Because profit function depends on revenue. Right? Because it's $10 per item x. Per means times. 10 times x. B. Find marginal revenue. That is derivative. Remember, uh, synonym of marginal means derivative. Marginal, I will even write down, means F prime. Whatever we say, marginal profit, then derivative of profit, and so on. What is derivative of 10x? 10. C. Find marginal revenue at or when we sell when. Uh, 75 items are sold. So how much money? No, no, I would say, uh, how much, what is the change? So marginal revenue is how fast the revenue is changing. What is the change when I'm se selling 75 items? That is marginal revenue, which is R prime at 75. What do you think is the answer? That is a very good question because people stuck here all the time. 10. Let's compare with D and I will explain to you just a second. Find revenue at 75. What is revenue at 75? Exactly. It's 10 times 75, which what you said, 750. Look at that. Revenue has a function, 10x. 
But derivative of 10x is a constant 10. There's nowhere to plug 75. And that's why the answer is still 10. That's why it's called a constant function. It's the same no matter what you plug. While revenue changed, that is a difference. A, B, C, D, E. Find profit. Profit is revenue minus cost. Remember, happy minus sad. You first see money and you feel happy and then you get upset because you have to pay salary and electricity and taxes. So that is the idea. We have both functions. Revenue, hopefully you created it correctly. It's 10x and that's what I'm afraid. If you mess up revenue, everything goes down the hill after this. Minus, now it's one more place to mess up. Open brackets, this is very important. And write down your cost function, which was given as 8x squared plus 5x minus 3 in those brackets. If you forget that, also everything will be wrong. Because you need to distribute the negative sign. 10x minus 8x squared minus 5x and plus 3. This is very important, very important. The negative sign should be distributed everywhere collect the terms it will be minus 8x squared minus plus 5x plus 3 put it in the box this is your profit function and now we ask you abcdef now we ask you to find marginal profit that is derivative of p of x that is minus 16x plus 5 make sense and so on we still can do Marginal profit at 7 or marginal cost function, marginal cost function at 100 items. You need to learn doing all of this. And the last thing to do, and we can do the quiz, is to practice product rule and quotient rule. It will be right now on the quiz. So, let's do this. We learned it last time, product and quotient rule. Quotient rule. Very fast, quotient rule, quotient rule. I call it PR and QR. If you follow the formula, you'll be fine. What is the derivative of x, 3x minus 1 over 5x plus 7? Derivative of the quotient is, the formula says, you should kind of say that loud a little bit to yourself, it helps a lot. Square the denominator and keep it like so. Differentiate the top, that's the formula u over v. The formula says, let me write it down, u over v prime. Square the denominator. Derivative of the top, derivative of 3x minus 1 is 3. Copy the bottom, 5x plus 7 minus, minus is part of the formula, don't mess up this part, minus, copy the top, copy the top, 3x minus 1 times derivative of the bottom. Derivative of 5x plus 7 is 5, like so. On the exam, I will not ask you to simplify, but on the quiz, I do. So, to simplify, you do not touch the denominator. That one is fine. But you distribute the, everything at the numerator. 3 times 5 is 15x plus 21 minus... 15x and now you have to decide minus or plus 5 you guys talking too much do you know if it's plus or minus 5 since you're talking so much see i caught you i caught you talking so let's see don't talk in my classes minus and minus gives you plus agree so don't forget to distribute 5, it will be minus 5, and then times minus gives you plus 5. Collect the terms, 5x plus 7 squared. 15x minus 15x, 21 plus 5 is 26, and this is the final answer. Can you do that? 
Can you do it on the exam if exam was today? Well, you were supposed to practice it with your homework, but I moved homework to Monday. But still, this is just using the formula, so I hope you're doing fine. Product rule is almost the same as quotient rule. This is your quotient rule. Quotient rule, u over v. Product rule is u times v, and I will keep it on the board for you, which is u times v plus u v prime. So the difference is there is no minus. Quotient rule has minus in the formula. Be very careful with this stuff. Order matters for the quotient rule, while order does not matter for the product rule. Questions? People who do the quiz? What do you think about that? So you, this is all going to be on the exam. I, it's very good. This review is really good. Try to watch it again. I'm going to post this recording for you.